live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE's live coverage in Las Vegas for AWS reInvent 2019. It's our seventh year of the Cube coverage. Watching the big wave of Amazon continue to pound the, pound the beach with more announcements. I'm John Furrier, extracting the signal from the noise with my partner Dave Vellante. Our next guest, Brian Hall, Vice President of Product Marketing for all of AWS. Brian, thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate oh, it's it. it's really a pleasure to be here. It's we've, a had great many, day. we've had many conversations off camera around opportunities, innovation, and you know, watching Andy Jassy's keynote, which is a marathon, three hours, 30 announcements, he's hitting his mark, live music, well done, but he got a ton of stuff in there. Let's unpack the key points. Tell us what you think people should pay attention to. Of all the announcements, what are the three major, or what are the major areas that, are, that stand out that are most notable that you, you want to highlight? Okay, I'll give, you, I'll give you four areas that I think are most notable from the keynote. The first is we continue to be very focused on how do we give the deepest and broadest platform for all the different things people want to be able to do with computing. And we had some big announcements around new instance, instances of EC2 um, that are based on custom design silicon that, uh, that we built. One of them is uh, called Inf1. These are instances that are focused on machine learning inference, where it turns out um, up to 90% of the cost for machine learning uh, often is, and so we have, we have a, uh, a brand new set of instances that will reduce costs by up to 90% for people doing inference in the cloud. We also last year announced a ARM chip that we developed uh, called Graviton, and we announced today Graviton 2, and that there are new instances that are running on Graviton 2, including our general purpose compute instances, our compute intensive instances, and me uh, high memory instances, and people will get up to 40% price performance improvement by using uh, the instances that are based so on the that. So the message is faster, uh, more, uh, in more inexpensive, but also there's an architectural shift going on with compute. Mm -hmm. We heard that with the IoT and some of the outpost stuff where compute is moving to the data because moving yes. data around is, is well recognized and now affirmed, it's expensive. Yeah. This is a big part of it. You got local zone, what's that local zone? Was it a local? Yeah, so there are kind of two, like, two ways that we're addressing that. The first is by making it so that our infrastructure is closer to customers. We have outposts for customers that want to run AWS in their own environments. We announced today local zones, which are essentially taking the compute storage database capabilities and putting it closer to metro areas where people want to have uh, single digit latency for applications when going to the cloud. And so for video rendering, for gaming and the like, that's going to be very helpful. Is that going to be like a regional point of presence or is it going to be installable any, on any premise anyone wants? I can put up my... Uh, uh, outposts can be put in any environment where you have the right power and network infrastructure. Local zones are managed by Amazon. So okay. I, don't have to have a, I don't have to manage any data center or anything. I can just choose to deploy to an environment that is geographically very it's close like to the Smaller than a region. Right? Smaller than an it's availability, an availability zone, zone, even. zone, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. So it's like a mini zone. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and so what about the, the availability component? It's sort of up to the customer to figure that out at their, on their uh, own it, end, it is connected to a region. So for instance, oh. we're releasing in Los Angeles uh, with, with availability now, and that's connected to the US West region. So all of the data backup redundancy application um, uh, uh, duplication that people want to be able to do can do, be done to the region. All right, so Graviton processor, Graviton 2, there was some early press reports that leaked out prior to reInvent. I noticed that didn't match kind of what was announced. Just clarify what the Graviton chip is doing. Mm -hmm. What was the key Graviton piece of the news here? Yeah, so um, Graviton 2 is a ARM-based processor uh, designed and built by AWS. It is powering three different instance types. Our, um, for those that know the, the types, the C instances, M instances, and R instances. Um, and uh, available starting today with M6, 
uh, which is one of our general purpose computing platforms. And so it gives up to 40% better price performance and uh, there's a whole ecosystem of, yeah. of uh, platforms and apps that'll run on ARM today. All right, you're pushing the envelope on compute, which is great, you got to continue to do, that's the core of jewels of AWS, which we love, and storage and everything else. It was some warm storage, I'll get to that in a second, but I want to get your thoughts on the SageMaker. Ah. A lot of time was spent on SageMaker, kind of levels of the stack, infrastructure, machine learning, SageMaker and tools and AI services, but the big announcement was this new IDE framework, uh, environment, it's not a yeah. framework, you're taking an environment like an IDE for all the different frameworks. Yep. Where did this come from? How, I mean, so obvious now looking at it, no one has this. This was a big part of the announcement. Can you yeah. explain this? Yeah, so what, what you're referring to is SageMaker Studio. Um, one of the things that people have really liked about SageMaker is it takes the whole process of building a model, training a model, and de deploying a model, and gives you the, the steps to do it, but there ha it hasn't been brought together into one environment before. And so SageMaker Studio is a integrated development environment for machine learning that lets you um, spin up notebooks, run experiments, test how your model's performing, deploy your model, um, detect if your model is drifting all from one place, um, which gives me essentially a single dashboard for my whole machine learning uh, workload. What do you think the impact's going to be on this? Because if I'm just looking at that obvious awesomeness, it's like, okay, that means anyone can get start using machine learning. You don't have to be a guru or a total Math well, that, that's, that's fundamentally a lot of what we're doing is trying to reduce the barrier for developers or anyone who has, um, who has a desire to start using machine learning to be able to do that. And SageMaker Studio is just another way that we're doing it. Another one we announced on, on Monday, or on uh, Sunday night, of course, a machine lear learning powered musical keyboard. Everyone knew that was coming, right? Um, and that's, that's just an example, like DeepRacer, um, where we're, we're taking machine learning, we're making it immediately practical and even fun, and then giving people a way to start experimenting, because that they'll, they'll eventually become um, uh, developers who are using machine learning for much bigger so, things. I have a question on that. As you simplify machine learning, you know, people are concerned about explainability. Um, you guys, I think, have some ways of helping people understand what's going on inside the algorithm so that's not a pure black box. Yeah. Is that correct interpretation? Yeah, it is, it is. We, um, we announced today uh, SageMaker Experiments, which is one of, the, one of the things about machine learning is you're kind of constantly tuning um, the different variables that you're using in your model to understand what works, what doesn't. And if that's all black box, it's really hard to tell. With, with SageMaker Studio and experiments in particular, now I can see how models perform differently based on tweaking variables, which starts making it much easier to explain what's happening. Yeah. I think you guys got it right, Andy laid out the databases, multiple databases, pick your database. It's okay to have multiple databases, just create some abstraction layers yeah. on top. I uh, totally agree with that philosophy, and I think that's going to be a nice, haven for opportunity. We agree. Um, it used to be that because so much of running a database was all of the operational expertise it took, that you wouldn't want to have too many databases because that's that many database administrators and, and um, people doing the undifferentiated heavy lifting. Now with the cloud, if you have a data set that's better suited for something like um, a, uh, uh, a workload in Cassandra, we announced a managed Cassandra service today. Um, you can just spin up that service, load your data and start going, and so it creates a lot more opportunity. Uh, talk about quantum, because I know you guys did it yesterday, which is always a signal from Amazon, it didn't make the keynote cut, um, but a very relevant uh, quantum announcement. <laughs> um, the joke was, is it going to be a quantum supremacy messaging? But no, it's more of a humble approach from you guys. It's more of, hey, we're going to put some quantum out there, setting expectations on the horizon, yeah. not over uh, playing your hand on that, but you also have an institute with Caltech, a uh -huh. little academic thing going on. What's the quantum uh, inside, inside conversation like at Amazon? What's, the, what's going on with it, what can we expect? Um, we're really excited about what quantum computing is going to be able to do for customers, and we say a lot at Amazon on many things, it's day one, which means it's really early. When we look at quantum, somewhere between zero and one. We're not quite sure where. 
Um, and so it's just uh, it's, uh, a way of saying it's really early days. And so what we're doing is providing a platform, uh, a partnership with Caltech to advance the state of the art, and then also a quantum solutions lab to help customers start to experiment and figure out how might this enable me to solve problems that I couldn't do before. You know, I wonder if I can ask. So Andy talked in the keynote about you know, most of the spend is still on-prem. Uh, and so the early days of cloud were about you know, infrastructure as a service, storage, compute, networking. And it seems like we're entering this era, this data is really sort of the driver where you're applying analytics and machine learning, data's everywhere. And this seems to be driving sort of new forms of, of compute. It's not just in this sort of stovepipe anymore. Yeah. If, do you see that? Do you see that sort of new emergence of new compute workloads. Yeah, yeah, we definitely do. And in, in particular, the, the way that people are starting to use data lakes, which is essentially a way of saying, hey, I have my data in one place in a bunch of different formats, and I want different analytical tools, different machine learning tools, different applications to all be able to build on that same data. And once you do that, you start unlocking opportunities for different application developers, different lines of business to take advantage of it. Well, Brian, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. You're uh, VP of all product marketing. You get the keys to the kingdom. You kind of see what's going on. Um, take us home and finish the exit interview out by, by talking about the best in and out that Jesse saved for last, the best for last, was the Outpost GA and the 5G wavelength with the yeah. CEO of Verizon. Yeah. I mean, that's going to bring 5G to stadiums, for drones, yeah. immersive experiences. I mean, that's a big vision. Take yeah. Us, take us home. Uh, people, people are rightfully excited about 5G for having faster connections, um, but the, the thing that, that we're uh, also very excited about is the fact that all these devices will have much lower latency and the ability to, to run interactive applications that having AWS with AWS Wavelength hosted with the 5G providers is going to give developers the chances to build. All right, Brian Hall with, with AWS. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, we are here on the Cube Studios, sponsored by Intel's our signature sponsor. It's called the Intel Cube Studios. Want to do a shout out for Intel, uh, to them for supporting our, the, our mission of bringing the best content from events and extracting the signal from the noise. We'll be back with more after this short break. <laughs>